focusing on what's wrong with him rather than what he's doing right. Now, this is often a reason why men will leave a good woman because he starts to feel that he can't win. He doesn't have a path to victory forward with you. If he feels like he is constantly being criticized or blamed or shamed or emasculated or told what to do and not given that hope that he has something he can do, that he can get out of the hole, that he can become your man, but he can become a better man in your eyes. So you have to give him that path to victory. You have to let him know, even if you're very upset with him and he hasn't been treating you well, what are the things he can start doing that can actually make you happy, that can make you feel good? And you do that primarily through appreciation. Now, before you even get to that, it's very important and valuable to do a process for yourself where you actually do an appreciation audit and look at all the things that he has done for you or that he is currently doing that you do appreciate, that, make, that made you or are making you feel good. It could be very small things and start to focus on those. Start to remind yourself about those things that you do appreciate about him and admire and respect, etc. So that you can then start to develop the habit of letting him know about those things, even through a simple thank you or through real appreciation, feminine appreciation, which is sharing how he made you feel, sharing the positive emotions that he was able to generate within you that shows him that he has a positive impact, that he is able to win, and then he'll naturally want to start doing more of those things, ideally. You have to, of course, balance it out, and I'm not saying you just give him a free pass and you never have to share about anything that you're not enjoying that he's doing, but that's where magnetic feminine communication comes into play, where you can actually share your feelings and your desires and your needs and your problems with him in a way that he receives them and wants to work on those things as well, which is very important. So, hi, I'm Brody Boyd with Magnetize Your Man, if you don't know me already, and for over 20 years combined with my wife, Antia, we've been helping thousands of successful women all over the world to get a loving, long-term, and committed relationship with a man they want. And so that was our first, our number seventh point that I just gave you on the reasons why, unfortunately, men will often leave a good woman, which again is unfortunate and sad. So let's go into the sixth reason why men will often leave good women, which is mothering him. We talk a lot about this and we go into it in our advanced trainings as well the specific ways and the, the minor ways and the big ways that a woman may be mothering a man, but it's so important to continue to touch on because it's counterintuitive. A lot of women believe that by giving to a man, by helping him, by wanting to do things for him, that they are earning his love, that they think there's an unconscious belief that if I just do enough, if I just make him happy enough, if I just show him how invaluable I am and how much I provide for him and give to him in his life, and the things that I do for him, that he would never want to leave me. He would never fall out of love with me. He would never lose attraction for me because I'm doing so many things for him. Why would he leave that? Well, the counterintuitive piece on this is the reason why a man will leave because of a woman mothering him and doing all these things for him and meeting his needs and trying to make him happy is because he feels less needed in the relationship himself. He feels less respected, less needed, less valuable, and he's not able to get that hero instinct within him activated where he can actually provide for you because that's the ideal relationship from a polarity standpoint is where the man, he is able to make you happy, that he's anticipating your needs, he's solving your problems, he's planning the dates, he's paying for the dates, he's making you happy because that's how he feels that he's well, he's locked it in. He's made you happy that he's not going to be the one that's going to be left by you. And if you're constantly doing things for him, he feels like he is a, a passive vessel in the relationship, that he's replaceable in a sense with another man. And it pushes him into his feminine energy where the attraction goes away, the passion goes away, and it, he feels like a little child, just like a, a son doesn't really feel strong sexual attraction to his mother. Of course, Freud would disagree with that. And there are some aspects of that. But for the most part, a man is not getting turned on by a woman mothering him. He's not feeling a sense of passion and devotion and, oh my gosh, this woman's amazing. I just I just never want to leave, leave, leave her for my life. Unless, of course, he's deeply broken, which there are a percentage of men, 5 to 15% that are deeply broken, that will they need a mother in their life. They're looking for a mother in their life because they are not capable of taking care of themselves. 
or they're very feminine. They're in their feminine energy and they're looking for a woman to pay the bills and provide for them and do all the things for them. Um, and that's how they feel good. They feel that they are um, able to relax more into their feminine when they attract a masculine woman like that. However, the passion's going to eventually fade, likely in, in both scenarios, because at our core, every man has a masculine core, every woman has a, a feminine core, and those cores require polarity to feel fulfilled. Without that opposite energy attracting, eventually the magnets become depolarized and they just become stale. They're like two friends talking with each other. They're two buddies. And there's not that passion. There's not that chemistry. There's not that life, that romantic life in the relationship. So it's very important. The fifth reason why men will often leave good women is because the woman is engaging in male bashing, either unconsciously or consciously. And this is not always with the man. This is often actually outside of the relationship where she is talking bad about him. She's talking bad about men in general. Men are men are like children. Men are bad. They're, they're just out to get you. They're all narcissists or they're sociopaths or they are babies or they are um, – they don't care or they just want to take advantage of women or they are cheaters or liars, etc. So – this often becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Women who speak like this to themselves, they're speaking that onto their relationship and they are actually creating that within their relationship. They're creating that within their reality that that's what's being then attracted to them because of their language, because of the words they speak. Your words have power. You know, God created the universe. The Bible tells us that God created the universe through the power of speech. And you are often creating your relationship and your reality through the power of your speech. So you have to look out for that because you're creating self-fulfilling prophecies. Now, what happens energetically as well is if you're engaging in this behavior where you're talking bad about him to other people, to your girlfriends, to your therapist, to, uh, to yourself, of course, or online <laughs> on various social media channels, the man's going to start feeling that energetically. He's going to feel this base level of resentment that's inside of you, that you don't value him, that you don't appreciate him, you don't respect him, that you don't you don't like him at a fundamental level. You might love him and you might want him in your life, but he may he'll start to sense that you don't actually like him, that you you feel a sense that you need him in your life, but you don't actually like him because you have all these judgments about what he is and what he's doing. And so that goes along with the first point that we that I said here, that it's so powerful to start to redirect that energy to create a self-fulfilling prophecy that's positive, where you start to focus on those things about him that you love and that you appreciate and that you respect and that you trust and that you feel good about, that he things that he, about him and things that he's done for you. And then also you can expand that to men in general. Of course, there's bad men out there. There's men who have done horrible things and throughout history and currently, but there's also men who've done really great things and who've just simply provided for their wives and their children and who've wanted to make their partners happy and who are heroes and great men that exist. And it's all about what you focus on because we can focus on any area of life, any group of people, and we can find the bad apples and we can find the good apples. So you want to start to focus on the good apples within your man, the good apples within men, so that you can draw that into your life. You can attract more men who want to be your hero, protector, and provider. And you will draw that out within your own man. If you're in a relationship or you're, you have a man that you're interested in now, his ability to be that hero, protector, and provider for you, it'll start shifting the dynamic, but it first starts within yourself to start praising and appreciating men, and especially the traits within your man that you really love and, and admire and respect. That'll bring more of that without within him, just energetically, but also it can come out through your speech and giving him a guideline and a map like we talked about to actually do more of that for you. So before we get to our next point, if you haven't yet and you want to learn the advanced principles of masculine, feminine, polarity, and communication, I highly recommend taking our free Magnetize Your Man quiz to get a loving long-term relationship with a man you desire fast by going to our website, magnetizeyourman.com, or you can click on the link, a special link in the description or comments below as well to get that. Highly recommended. All right. The fourth reason why men will often leave good women all the time is having low self-worth. If you have low self-worth within yourself, it's going to be very hard for you to receive a man and to receive anything from him. Like we talked about him being the hero protector provider, because there's going to be a wall there. There's going to be a block. And unconsciously, you're going to be saying to yourself, I don't deserve 
a man to do things for me. I don't deserve a man to be my hero because who am I? I'm not good enough. I'm not attractive enough. I'm not lovable enough. I'm not worthy. And we need to start working on that. We need to start shifting it because a man ultimately will leave a woman that he doesn't believe has high self-worth. And it's something to cultivate within yourself. And there's also positive dynamics and reinforcements you can create in your relationship using magnetic feminine polarity, and magnetic feminine communication that will cause him to start actually treating you like a high value woman. So to start building that, that self-worth within you, it starts from the internal and the external. Internally, it's about shifting your mindset and shifting your beliefs. And a big way you can start shifting that for yourself is through positive affirmations that you are an amazing woman. You're worthy of having a man devote himself to you. You're worthy of a, having a loving, long-term, committed relationship with a high-quality man. That you are amazing, beautiful, um, confident, deserving, etc., now, the affirmations, you may want to start small with something just like, I like myself, or I'm, I'm attractive, or I'm a good person. Start to look at those traits within you that you can compliment and admire, things that are small and things that are big, things about things you've accomplished in the past, things you've done, and also traits about yourself physically and internally. And you can start to build that sense of confidence. Now, the other aspect of this, which is just as important, if not more, is the external. You have to prove to yourself that you are a valuable woman. What does a valuable woman do? Well, a valuable woman, a worthy woman, is investing into herself. She is taking care of herself. She is setting boundaries with herself of what she allows herself to do or not do or the types of people she allows herself to hang out with or not hang out with. She is also being vulnerable and open because if a woman is believing that she's a high-value woman, she believes that she's worth having men want to help her. She's worth having men want to protect her. She's worth having men want to be her hero. So she's open with them. She is vulnerable with them. She shares her feelings with them. She asks them for help. She engages with them. And it's scary. It's scary to do some of these behaviors. And oftentimes you have to just take the leap. You have to go first because otherwise you stay stuck. You stay close and you believe, uh, Men aren't gonna, gonna wanna help me. Men are just gonna hurt me again. He's just going to take advantage of me, just like it's happened in the past. But then those walls stay closed and you never give him that opportunity to actually help you, to actually provide. Be a real masculine provider in the emotional sense, in the physical sense, in the sexual sense potentially, if you're at that stage in the relationship, in the financial sense even, where he can give to you and you can receive him. You can receive his gifts and you create this exchange, this masculine, feminine, polarized exchange, just like in a dance where he's giving and he feels great about giving and you're receiving as a worthy woman and you feel great about receiving. That's the kind of path and pattern that you want to start creating in your relationship through building your self-worth. The third reason why men will often leave good women is because you are loving him, but you're not respecting or trusting him. Now you can love a man, you can adore a man, you can want him in your life, and you can think all these great things about him, but if you're not actually respecting or trusting him, which is an act, it's good to feel you respect him and feel that you trust him, but it's even more important to show him with your actions that you respect him and that you trust him. Because if a man feels that you love him, but then you're also engaging in behaviors such as mothering him, telling him what to do, criticizing him, trying to control him or nag at him or manipulate him in some way or give to him, be the provider, treat him like a child, then he's not going to feel that that relationship is going to be a good source of purpose for him. Men ultimately need to feel like the relationship gives them purpose. That's the ultimate masculine drive is to feel like he is a hero, that there is a reason for him existing, that he has a mission in his life. That's why men will go to war. That's why men will build empires. That's why men will you know, fight to the death to, to achieve some recognition, some status in their life, because they want to feel that they are valuable. They want to feel that they have something to offer. And if he doesn't feel that you respect him or trust him, that he's not a good enough man. He's failed as a man. And sometimes you have to go first, even if you feel he doesn't deserve it, to show him that trust and to show him that respect, mostly through what you don't do. But there's also many ways you can also amplify that through magnetic feminine communication, magnetic, magnetic feminine communication uh, polarity that we'll teach you in our advanced courses, that he will start to then 
feel that this is the woman I, I need to stay with because I feel so much purpose with her. Not that he feels so much love from you, which is great. It's great that he feels love from you. But more, more important than that to a man is he wants to feel that he has purpose in the relationship, that it means something. His life has meaning, that he is a hero to somebody. If he can't be a hero to the rest of the world, at least he can be a hero to you. He can serve you. He can make you happy. And be the man. Be that masculine um, figure, that masculine hero image within himself that he can feel for you that's going to make him feel really great. That's how men feel happiness different than women. He needs a sense of purpose. Women feel happiness primarily through feeling loved and adored. But if you're giving him that, that love and adoration, you're actually, if that's all you're giving him, you're actually putting him into the feminine. You're actually making him feel like the woman in the relationship because he doesn't care about that ultimately. He, he likes it, but what he ultimately wants is you to trust him, to believe in him, to respect his leadership, to respect him as a man, to respect his abilities, and to allow him to take that lead to to plan the dates to plan the future to pace the relationship just like in that ballroom dance which i used to do actually when i met my first girlfriend i highly recommend taking a ballroom dance if you can at some point because you learn a lot of these principles that will draw a man to you the next uh, big reason why men leave good women is a loss of mask on feminine polarity which encompasses a lot of what we talked about already but masculine feminine polarity is again one of the only things primary thing that creates attraction, love, devotion in a relationship long term is the opposite energies of masculine and feminine. Opposites attract, opposite energies attract, and you need to have that dynamic for the relationship to have real lasting power and to have it feel that deep sense of passion and devotion in within the relationship for each other, but especially on his end. So if you become more feminine and you are more polarized within your feminine energy and you use magnetic feminine polarity, magnetic feminine communication, you will inspire a man into his healthy masculine that he will want to step up. He will want to invest in the relationship. He will want to give to you. He will want to make you happy. However, that whatever that involves and solve problems for you, etc. So you need to shift first. Really, he can shift too, but we only need one person to shift. If we can shift you into your high value feminine energy, we can then shift him into his high value masculine energy and you can have an incredible relationship. But if you continue to move into your masculine, you're gonna actually push him into his feminine and now the relationship's gonna become depolarized and there's gonna be a buildup of resentment on his side and on your side and ultimately neither of you are gonna be happy and the relationship will likely dissolve because that's not the way that we are wired. As men and women, we have these fundamental energies and instincts within us that are in our biology, that are in our DNA. They're the reasons why we as hum humanity has survived up until this point is because we have these powerful dynamics, this reciprocal, beautiful dance of energies within us that allows us to thrive and expand into the future, into eternity, really. And by embracing that, you are going along with God's design, with nature's design for you to be cherished and adored by a masculine man that you trust and respect and that he just does wants nothing more than to make you happy. So oftentimes you have to create that dynamic first. You can shift and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy like we talked about. And now you can have a beautiful, healthy, uh, amazing dynamic and relationship moving forward in your life. So the number one Da, 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 get the drum beat. I got to get some sound effects here. Reason why men leave good women all the time is he doesn't feel needed. Again, similar to what we've talked about before, but I want to go a little deeper into this. So men have a need. They have a need within them. It's literally like oxygen in a relationship for a man. He has to feel needed. He has to feel that there's a reason why he's there. If he feels like, why do you need me? You can pay all the bills yourself. You have all your, your girlfriends, you, you have all the ways of pleasing yourself that I don't have a mission here. I don't have a purpose. I don't feel like there's a reason for me to exist in this relationship. So I want you to be happy. It seems like you're happier without me. So I'm going to let you be and I'm going to move on. That's ultimately what a man will feel when he feels like you don't need him. You're an, if you're a strong, independent woman, you don't need no man, then that's likely what's going to happen is there's not going to, a man's not going to feel needed and he's not going to be there. He's not going to want to be in a relationship like that. Now, it doesn't mean that 
he's a critical component. Like men can't do everything for you. A man can't help you to breathe, for example. Like you have to breathe on your own. You have to eat your food on your own. You have to take care of some basic level of yourself by yourself and managing your thoughts and managing your your the way you, you set your habits and your daily routines and setting boundaries with yourself. There's so many things that you have to manage with yourself. What you're doing right now, you're investing in yourself, you're improving, you're learning, you're getting educated in the proper ways to have healthy uh, long lasting, incredible relationships. So you're doing that here, but he can't do those things for you. There's a spectrum of what a man can do for you and what he can't. So a man doesn't, he doesn't have to feel like he has to be your caretaker and do all the, everything for you, but he does need to feel that there are critical areas in your life that he can fill the gap, that he can provide for you, that he can give and fill that role for you to make you happy, to give you pleasure. And, you know, just like in sex, if we use that analogy, um, you know, male and female genitalia, they're a great analogy for how men want to feel that they can fill that gap, <laughs> that they can make you happy, they can give you pleasure. And if it's already filled, or if it's not, if it's closed, the shop is closed, energetically and emotionally, not just sexually, because that should come later when you're in a committed exclusive relationship, but he needs, he's going to feel like, why am I here? There's nothing for me to provide her. She's good. She doesn't need me. So you have to find those ways in those areas if you want a healthy polarized relationship where he can provide for you. You can look at your man, and this is a great exercise. Look at your man and look at the things that he is good at. Look at the things he's passionate about. Look at the things about him that makes him unique. And find things within your life that you can ask him for help. So for example, if he has a lot of muscles, if he's strong, obviously he can help you with carrying things, fixing things around the house, you know, picking you up if you need if your your feet are getting tired. There's a lot of things he can do from that point of view, and most men are physically, statistically much stronger physically than women are. So there's a lot of things he can do from a strength point of view that can help you. So rather than just hiring somebody to help you around the house, ask him for some help with some things. Ask him to help you bring in, you know, something that you picked up from the from the store that's heavier or get something off the shelf if he's taller than you. There's also, of course, depending on his, his specialties, if, if he's good with math, if he's good with numbers, he can help you potentially with, with tax questions that you have, with other business challenges you might be running into or career issues. Or if he's really good with people and negotiating, he can help you out with, you know, negotiating a better salary or getting a, a better deal for your house as you sell it or as you buy a new house. There's endless amounts of skills and abilities that people can have, and you can look at your man from that unique lens and say, what are his unique skills and abilities, and how can I ask him more for help in those areas and show him the problems that I have gracefully using feminine communication, the problems that I have that he can help me with, that he is inspired to want to give and make me happier from that place so that he feels fully valued, fully respected, fully trusted, fully needed in the relationship, and he would... He, he just feels that deep sense of purpose. He would never want to leave that because where is he going to get that anywhere else? Most women don't know these things and most women are too busy taking care of themselves and not even thinking about what a man's real needs are or they don't know about what a man's real needs are so that the man is just, why am I here? And this may be unconscious for him. He might not even know why he's losing attraction or why he's pulling away or why he left that woman. But unconsciously, it's because he felt something was missing. He did not feel needed. He did not feel that sense of deep purpose in the relationship. So it's so critical to have that. So much love. Hope this is helpful. Leave your comments or questions below. Love to hear them. And I'll talk to you again very soon. Bye-bye.